Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, myself Chirag. In this video, I am going to discuss about OSI reference model. OSI stands for Open System Interconnection. OSI model was developed by the ISO in 1984. Before OSI model was developed, many devices were unable to work with each other because there are no standard protocol or procedures are there. There are seven layers in the OSI model. First one is physical layer, second one is data link, then network, transport, session, presentation, and the application layer. So how can we remember all this layer in a sequentially? I will give you one trick. Now read this statement. Please do not tell secret password anyone. Now take the first character of all the words and now you can write all the layers in a sequential manner. Here physical layer is the farthest layer from the user and application layer is the nearest layer from the user. Next how OSI layer works. I will show you one animation. See in this animation here left hand side is the sender side and right hand side is the receiver side. At the sender side data will be sent from application layer to physical layer and at the receiver side data will be sent from physical layer to application layer. Here both the physical layers are connected physically with the intermediate devices. At the center side encapsulation process will be done and at the receiver side de-encapsulation process will be done. After the de-encapsulation process receiver will receive the original data. Now we will discuss all the layer in the detail one by one. We will start with the application layer. Application layer is the responsible for providing the services to the user. So how application layer provide the service to the user? Now I will show you two diagrams, one for the sender and one for the receiver. So all the applications are connected with the application layer. When data comes from application to the application layer, one header is added. In the header, which protocol is used for the sending the data? It may be FTP, HTTP, HTTPS. The detail of this protocol is included in this header. So then data passed to the presentation layer. So this is the sender side process. So at the receiver side, when data comes from presentation layer to the application layer. So in the application layer, header 7 is read and then removed header 7 and data passed to the particular application of the user. Next, functionality of the application layer. The first one is network virtual terminal. It means telnet or we can say remotely access the PC from one location to another location. Next, file transfer, access and management through the, any of the applications installed by the users. Next one is mail services. It is also a data transfer access and management. I will show you one animation for the better understanding. Now see in this animation there are a lot of applications are there. So through all the applications user will send the data and receive the data at the application layer. Next is the presentation layer. It is the sixth layer of the OSI step. Name suggests itself how data will be represent. So this layer is concerned for the data representation. Next, the presentation layer is the responsible for translation, compression and encryption. Here translation means the data will be converted into human language to the machine language or we can say it in the binary language. Next, compression. Compression means before sending the large data, data will be compressed or we can say the size of the data will be reduced and the encryption. So before sending the original data, data will be in encryption form or we can say it is a non-readable form and then send to the sender to the receiver. Next, see in this diagram, uh, in the presentation layer, data comes from the application layer and forward to the session layer. So before forwarding the data, here header is included. So this is called encapsulation process at the sender side. Now see next figure at the receiver end. At the receiver end, data comes from the session layer and passed to the application layer. So before data will be passed to the application layer, at the presentation layer, header will be removed. In the header contain translation, compression and encryption algorithm. At the receiver side, translation, the data will be converted into machine language to the human language and data will be decompressed and data will be decrypted. Next, the functionality of the presentation layer is translation, encryption and compression. We have already discussed all the functionalities. Now I will show you one animation for the better understanding of the presentation layer. 
see this animation data is translate then encrypt and then send to the receiver side so next layer is the session layer the session layer is responsible for dialog control and the synchronization so what is dialog control and what is synchronization dialog control means when two pc are communicate with each other at that time which communication mode will be used for the communication it may be a half duplex full duplex or simplex that is called dialog control so next is the synchronization synchronization is required because sometimes network is disconnected if at that time synchronization is not there it means again you will send data from sender to receiver i will give you one example of the synchronization i want to send 100 mb data to the receiver side so what i have to do after sending 10 mb i will put one checkpoint so again after sending 10 mb i will put one checkpoint so i will first send 10 mb data then network is disconnected so i will not send first 10 mb data i will start with the second 10 mb data so that is called the synchronization in network in session layer at the sender side data comes from the presentation layer and pass to the transport layer so before passing the transport layer one header is included in this header contains the dialog control detail and now in this figure you can see this this is the synchronization we can say this is the checkpoints next at the receiver end whenever data comes from transport layer to the session layer then header is removed and passed to the presentation layer next this layer is network dialog controller establish maintain and synchronize the interaction among the computers we have already discussed that the functionality of this layer is dialog control and the synchronization now i will show you one animation for the session layer now see in this animation one session is established and then authentication process will be done for the secure connection next layer is the transport layer when data comes from session layer to transport layer data will be converted into the segment so this four layer are called as the host layers next the transport layer is the responsible for the delivery of a message from one process to another process so for the process to process delivery there are two different protocols are there in the transport layer one is reliable and second one is non-reliable reliable protocol is tcp and non-reliable is udp tcp is connection oriented protocol and udp is connection less protocol next see the figure this is the sender side figure when data comes from uh, session layer to the transport layer it convert into the segment and all the segment header is added so inside the header which protocol is used for the process to process delivery it may be tcp or it may be udp so the detail of the tcp or udp is included inside the header and then pass the data to the network layer so at the receiver end when data comes from the network layer to the transport layer again data will be converted into the segment remove all the header and all the data are reassembled and sent to the session layer next functionality of the transport layer first one is service point addressing it is port addressing whenever tcp use with the http so the data will be transferred from port number 80 sender to the receiver port number 80 so it is process to process delay next one is the segmentation and reassembly so data will be convert into segment at the uh, sender side and when segments are sent to the receiver side again segment is reassembled and convert into the data next connection control here there are two protocols are used one is udp and tcp in tcp protocol connection control will be used because it establish maintain and terminate the connection so connection control is used in the tcp protocol next flow and error control in tcp flow control is required but in udp flow control is not required flow control means after sending how much amount of data receiver will send the acknowledgement so it is called flow control after receiving the acknowledgement from the receiver side so in tcp protocol again sending the data in error control here both the method are used for the error correction and error detection whenever uh, some of the data or we can say some of the frames are lost during the transmission at that time acknowledgement comes from the receiver to sender side again transport layer will send the data to the sender side so that is called error control 
I will show you one animation for the transport layer. This is the simple animation. This is the process to process delivery in this animation. So TCP and UDP are the protocol of the transport layer. Next layer is the network layer. When data comes from transport layer to network layer, so segment will be converted into the packets. Network layer is the responsible for the delivery of individual packets from source to destination. So we can say uh, data transfer from host to host. So here for the host to host communication, there are two different scenarios. If I want to transfer the data from one PC to another PC, it may be both the PC in the same network or it may be both the PC in the different network. If both the PC are in the same network, then data link layer provides the service. When both the PC in the different network, so network layer is the required. So internet protocol, so we can say IP is the protocol of the network layer and network layer is the heart of the OSI model. Next, see in this diagram, when data comes from transport layer to the uh, network layer at that time segments is converted into the packet and one header is added. So what is inside the header? So header contains the source and destination IP address of the PC. At the receiver end, when data will be transferred from data link layer to the network layer, so check the header, check the destination IP address and then remove the header and pass this data to the transport layer. So functionality of the network layer is the logical addressing. So here logical addressing is the IP address. So IP address provided to the all the PC in the all different networks. So whenever we transfer the data from one network to another network. So using the IP address or we can say using the logical address, we can easily pass the data from different network. Next, routing. Routing means when data transfer from one PC to another PC and both are in the different network. So sender will decide from the which path data will transfer from sender to the destination. So it is called routing. I will show you one animation of the network layer. So this is the source. So we can say any of the PC from the internet and this is the destination. So data will be reached at source to destination. So IP protocol is used because different network. So this is the IP address of the source and this is the destination. Here ARP protocol is used to finding the MAC address from the IP address. Next, the next protocol is the data link layer. When packet comes from the network layer to the data link layer, so packet will be converted into the frames. Next, the data link layer is the responsible for moving frames from one hop to the next hop. Here hop means all the intermediate devices. At the sender side, when data comes from network layer to the data link layer, it converts into the frame. After converting into the frame, header and trailer are added at the individual ends of the frame. So what is included in the header and trailer, we will discuss later on. At the receiver end, when data comes from physical layer to the data link layer, again it converts to the bit stream to the frame and header and trailer will be removed from the data and passed to the network layer. Next, data link layer is divided into two sub layer. First one is the LLC, logical link control, it is the upper layer. The second one is MAC, media access control, it is the lower layer. Next, LLC is the responsible for the flow control, error control and access control. So what is flow control? I will give you one example to understand the flow control. So I want to send the data to the receiver side. So before sending the data, I will ask to the receiver. So how much data will be received in per second? For example, the speed of the receiver is 5 MB per second for the receiving data. And here I am sending the data with the 10 MB. So it means 5 MB data will be lost at every second. So I will send the data with the 5 Mbps speed. Next, in error control, uh, at the data link layer, only error detection method is there. If any frame will be sent and there will be error inside the frame, so again retransmit the frame by the data link layer. Next is the access control. So there are many devices connected at the same link. So data comes from the application layer and sent to the particular device. It is decided by the data link layer. It is called access control. Next, MAC is the responsible for the physical addressing. Physical addressing means the MAC address. It is the permanent address of the device. Whenever transport the data within the same network, so physical addressing is the use. Next, the functionality of the data link layer. The first one is framing. Framing means 
packet comes from network layer to the data link layer, it converts into the small part or we can say small bit stream. It is called a frame. The next other functionalities we have already discussed. One is physical address, second one is flow control, error control and the access control. One question is that uh, what is the inside header and what is the inside the trailer? If MAC addressing or we can say the source and destination MAC address which is inside the header and the error control, flow control and access control bits are added into the trailer. I will show you one animation of the data link layer. Now see there are two parts MAC and LLC. This is the frame. This is source MAC, destination MAC and send to the destination. The next layer is the physical layer. When frames comes from data link to the physical layer, it convert into the bit stream. All the devices in the network are connected with the physical data link and network layer. So these three layers are called as the media layers and the upper layers are called as the host layers. Next, the physical layer is the responsible to transfer the bits from one hop to the another hop. Next, see in this figure, where is the bit stream or a physical media? So this is the sender side physical layer, this is receiver side physical layer. Both are connected with each other through the intermediate devices and the cables. So whenever sender bit stream will be sent to the physical media and received at the physical layer of the receiver side. Next, functionality of the physical layer. First one is interface and medium like guided cables. It means both the PC, we can say sender and receiver are connected to the uh, intermediate devices through the cabling. Next, physical topology. So which topology is used in the network? It may be a bus topology, ring topology. So data will be sent to the particular physical topology. Next, transmission modes. So there are three transmission modes, simplex, full duplex and half duplex. So which transmission mode is used? It is decided by the session layer. Now physical layer just send the data to the particular transmission modes. Next. So this is the summary of OSI reference model. So here left hand side all the layers of the OSI model and the right hand side all the layers of the TCP IP. So this is the application and example of the OSI layers and this is the devices and protocols are used at the particular layer of the OSI model. So this is the summary of OSI reference model. Thank you.